Okay guys, I have read your comments and I'm here today to show you another way to print out your helmets in one piece with less supports than you need to. And it's an even faster method than the one that I showed you in my video six months ago. I've received so much great feedback on that video and I really have to thank you guys so much for that. And also a lot of you have told me that that was how you found my channel. So if that was the video that got you here, then definitely leave it down in the comments below. And I stand by everything that I said in that video. I definitely still use that custom support tool on Kira for a lot of other things. Whenever I was told about this method that I'm about to show you, it kind of blew my mind, especially because the like icon for it was staring me right in the face whenever I was recording the footage of the last video that I made. I was just like, I can't believe that you missed it. It was right there. But you live and you learn. This hobby is, uh, there's a lot of stuff to learn in this hobby and I'm primarily self-taught. So I'm kind of trying to cut myself a little bit of a break there. So I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you to everyone that brought this to my attention in my comment section or even direct messaged me, especially because all of you were just so nice about it. There is one thing about the 3D printing community and like just communities in general that it, it can be very daunting to get into 3D printing. There's a lot of people they say that their way is the highway or there's only one program you can use to slice your files and we should all know that that's kind of that's a lot of bullshit. Use whatever you want, use whatever is comfortable to you. I really do appreciate you guys letting me know about this feature within Cura and just not being jerks about it. it again, this is something that I am completely self-taught hot on. I am not great at it. I just like to share what I know. But I also just wanted to say as a woman and a woman on the internet, I often feel like I have to have so much research done before I talk about something. And it can really get exhausting sometimes and knowing like, oh, if I put a YouTube video up and there's another way to do it, someone might be like, oh, you're an idiot. I can't believe you didn't know about that. But at the end of the day, 3D printing is hard. There's a lot of stuff to learn whenever it comes to 3D printing. Thank you guys so much for being understanding and a welcoming community. Anyways, let's get on to the actual tutorial. That's what you guys are here for. You gonna show people how to, how to 3D print helmets? All right, so I've got Kira up and I've got my Bo-Katan model from Mystery Makers already loaded into it. And just so you guys know, I will have Mystery Makers Patreon down below. He has the Bo-Katan helmet as well as all of her armor from The Mandalorian season two. I just believe he is still working on the jetpack, but they're great files. I have printed everything out and you will see them in future videos. So what I'm gonna show you guys first is what the helmet is going to look like if you just use the general supports that come with Kira and you click that general support button. And then I'm gonna compare it to the new method that I'm gonna show you guys. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is stand this model upright and to do that we're just going to want to select this third option down on the left of the screen and rotate it kind of like you see me doing here because the model is yellow at this point that means everything is within the boundaries of our print bed and it's going to essentially mean that it'll be able to be printed but if you notice like along the bottom the angle of this helmet is pretty steep and while we can produce a successful print out of this, it will totally work if you hit generate support. We want to try and get this helmet as close to the build plate as we possibly can so that there's going to be less supports and it's gonna give us a better chance of it being a successful print. So to do that, I'm going to go back to the rotation tool and I'm going to rotate the model back just a little bit until it's sitting closer to the build plate. It's going to show like this weird, like grayish kind of color that it's not going to fit on the build plate, but don't worry. We're just gonna rotate it on the, I don't know what axis this is, but I'm going to rotate it. And you'll see here, it'll show yellow and it'll settle down onto the build plate and we're all good. To be honest, I can get this even closer. So let me do that right here for a minute. And yeah, okay, there's just like a little sliver of space between some bits of the helmet and the bed, and that's really what we want. As a disclaimer, if you wanna know my like overall 3D printing settings, I'll have that link down below, but for this specific model, I'm gonna be using 0.28 millimeter layer height, 15% infill, and 5% support infill with a print speed of 120 millimeters per second. I know you can print with really big nozzles at you know higher layer heights. I have just been, I've just been too lazy to put my bigger nozzles on my machine, and I also don't have a volcano nozzle so I'm kind of like nah, I'm kind of on the fence about doing it but anyways I've got the auto supports checked here and my support angle is also set at 35% and I mostly have this because I want that visor portion to be all completely supported feel free to play around with your support angles and you could you know be reducing things even more here so to show you what this print time would look like with the auto generated supports I'm just going to go down to the bottom right and select slice and it is going to take us about three days and I don't want that and it's also going to be taking a lot of fill and that 
that's a lot of filament that's basically going towards supports that we don't need in the middle of this helmet. So everything that you see in blue here are the auto-generated supports in the middle of the dome where if you watch my last video on print orientation, you'll know that we actually don't need that because of the way that FDM printing works, you're basically creating layers from the bottom up and with a dome, the dome is basically going to self-support itself. So you don't need all of that support stuff in the middle of it. And so we're gonna get rid of it right now. For this method, we're going to be basically blocking out supports that have already been auto-generated. And the best part is it's already in cure. You don't have to download anything like on the last video that I showed you. We're just going to go and angle our camera so that we can look at it from underneath the build plate. And everywhere we see is red in that dome is where support is going to be generated for like the chosen support settings that we have. So that's like my 35% angle and things like that. So again, if your helmet has, you know, higher or lower support angles, it may look a little bit different than this. So on the left dashboard of your screen is the very bottom is this icon. And if you're like me, uh, you had no idea what this button did until this video or someone else told you. And hello, welcome, we're glad you're here. So if you click this button, it will place a small square anywhere on your model and at first glance you're probably like why the heck would I place a random block on the underside of my model? That just doesn't make any sense. But when we get to slicing this model, you'll understand a little bit better, but these small blocks can essentially be sized up. They can be rotated and they can be moved anywhere on your model. And what they do is they essentially cancel out any supports that you see whenever you're slicing your G code. So I'm going to place four small blocks under the dome. And once I've got all those placed, um, you're just gonna make sure to select just your block because when you go to resize it, um, your helmet's gonna do something like this and you're gonna freak out and uh, think everything's ruined, but it's okay, just go click undo, it's fine. Once I've got one of my blocks selected, I'm going to go and select the size up button on the dashboard. And you can see here, I can basically make it any size that I want and I can kind of move it around and things like that. So I'm gonna go rotate it here and just kind of go and make it rotate so that it takes up about a quarter of the red oval on the top of this dome and I'm just gonna move it around until everything is covered. And all of these other blocks are, you know, sized up as well. And I had to use four blocks because my underside dome was just kind of a weird shape. And it just, it, it was easier for me to just get four blocks under there. So, you know, kind of mess around with it, play around with it, see what you like best. So what I'm gonna do now that I've got all of my little blocks under here is I'm just gonna go and hit slice once more. And as you can see, we shaved off an entire day's worth of print time on this model, and we have reduced our filament usage by like 500 grams, which is a half of a roll of filament, which is a lot of filament at the end of the day. For most filament brands that are $20 a roll, that's you're saving basically 10 bucks just in support alone. So now all that we've got to do is load it up onto our SD card and put it into our printer and let it go for two days. And I had a power outage whenever I was printing this, so I'm gonna throw in a little bit of that footage here. Well, everything was going fine. I know you can't see because it's like dark in here, but um, power went out. So we're gonna have to try and do the power recovery whenever these both come back on. And it literally just came back on as I was talking about it. All right, power loss recovery. Let's resume the print. Hopefully the, the one issue that I have whenever I'm doing this with a resume print is that it like has cooled down just a little bit. Like this was off for literally maybe a minute and it cools down just a little bit. So there may be like a little bit of issue here when I, you can't even see let me go turn on the light usually i will have an issue right here and it'll be like a really weak spot in the helmet i'm gonna need to go in later and on the inside of the helmet i'm gonna reinforce it where that i don't want to say like the break is but where it restarted so god they were going so well so i'm hoping that everything goes okay when they restart and there goes the helmet everything looks okay and hopefully i can come back here and like maybe 10 minutes not 10 minutes oh my god it may be a day and i'm hoping that this will be fine and two days and a power outage later, I've got a completed Bo-Katan helmet. It's got all of the supports in all the right places, and as a bonus, I can basically take them off with my hands or some little plastic clippers. But yeah, it's got all the supports everywhere we want it, like around the visor and underneath the little V part here, as well as along the back too and on the ear caps, and none of the supports where we want it, which is underneath and all that wasted plastic that would have been there. I hope this video helped you out in some way, and if you have any other questions, as always, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. If I missed something or if there is an even easier way to do this, please let me know because I would love to know about it. And as always, guys, I will catch you guys next time. Bye! Bye. <laughs> Helmet as well as the majority... Rude. <laughs> Show everyone meerkat mode, bud. Show meerkat mode. Oh.